Hello, my name is Morgan Petronelli, Assistant Editor with Dermatology Times, and today we're discussing a new possible therapy for psoriasis involving a specifically tailored probiotic formula. Let's dive right in. Today I have joining me Kath O'Neill, Scientific Officer at Skin Biotherapeutics and Professor of Translational Dermatology at the University of Manchester. Well, thank you so much, Professor O'Neill, for joining me today. Um, let's start off with, why don't you just tell me a little bit about um, what you're working on regarding probiotics and psoriasis? So, um, I'm in the dermatology research group at the University of Manchester, and that's uh, probably a leading centre worldwide for psoriasis research. Um, however, psoriasis research is kind of a newish foray for my lab but probiotics and how they might uh, work for skin isn't we've been we've been looking at that for a, for a little while so mostly the sort of work we've been doing is looking at whether we can do something a bit quirky whether we can take probiotics which are actually organisms from the gut usually but whether we can use them topically because most people think about probiotics as something that you you know, drink down or, or eat on your breakfast cereal or something. So we've been asking, can you use them topically to, to treat skin in health and disease? And the company has um, had uh, a lot of success um, looking at, at that kind of uh, thing. We, um, we have a, a product out there already um, for different applications. Um, and it's really been based around... Um, the, the emerging data on the different things that are wrong with the skin and the immune system in psoriasis. So there are multiple things go wrong in psoriasis. It's, it's thought of as a, a skin disease because that's where it manifests, but actually it's really a systemic condition. And we also know from the excellent probiotic research that's going on around the world that different types of probiotic bacteria can target different immune pathways, different things that might be wrong. Um, with, with the body. And so what we've tried to do now is design a blend of bacteria, a mixture of different bacteria targeting each of these different pathways that are known to be aberrant in, in psoriasis. So that's kind of a flavor of, of the work that we do. <laughs> you know, and how did you initially come up with this concept? Um, well, this was because of an article that I co-authored probably, I don't know, maybe three or four years ago now, and we called it the gut-skin axis in health and disease. And this was the idea that the gut and the skin are interconnected and they do talk to each other. And actually gut and skin have got an awful lot in common. And that was really um, a, a, a hypothesis or an opinion piece. But as I got researching that whole area more and more of, of whether and how gut and skin might engage in some bi-directional communication, I, I kind of got more and more interested in it and started thinking about how you could use knowledge of probiotics and knowledge of skin disease and match them and see if you could find probiotics that could fit, fix aspects of, of disease um, for the skin. So that, that's where it stemmed from, really. You know, in what stage of development is the probiotic and is there any future plans for it or anything? For, for the psoriasis supplement that's mm -hmm. under development? Well, we're very nearly there, actually. So... Um, for a number of years, I've had um, very good relationships with a wonderful little probiotics company in Amsterdam called Winklove Probiotics. Um, I get on with the scientists there. I mean, they've become, become my friends. We've had so many conversations over the years. So I approached Winklove with this idea um, probably about 18 months ago. And I just said, hey, you know, um, you've got this lovely strain bank. Can we start screening your strain bank for activities that might be useful? Um, for targeting psoriasis. So they've been doing that. We designed a blend together. They've been looking at their strain bank. Um, and we think by Christmas, we'll have that blend ready uh, to go into a, a human study. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> once approved, how do you think this will affect the dermatology community and psoriasis patients? Well, initially, because we want to get it into a human study as quickly as possible, we are really um, going to uh, do a trial with it as a food supplement. So um, obviously as a food supplement, we can just get it out there faster because the, the regulatory approval hurdle is, is a lot lower. 
So initially, um, this will be word of mouth feedback from um, psoriasis sufferers. I mean, we, we get in emails in volume every week saying we want to be part of this study. We want to be part of this study. Because actually, if you look at the psoriasis forums, a lot of people are, are self-administering probiotics anyway. And some of them are reporting good success by taking probiotics. But I think this will be really the first time that a blend has been designed with psoriasis specifically in mind. So I think there's general excitement about, about this study. So we think we'll be into, into a human study early next year, and we're going to provide people with an app, and they're going to self-report on their symptoms. And we've had to do it this way initially because of the COVID-19 situation, because we don't have access to patients at the moment. <laughs> But actually, a, a, a real, in inverted commas, clinical study is uh, planned for later next year, where we will be taking blood samples from people and looking at the levels of inflammatory markers and that kind of thing, and hope, hoping to see a reduction in those levels, obviously. Um, another question I had was, um, in regards to probiotics, do you think that you know once you see um, some positive results with psoriasis and using probiotics with it, do you think you'll be able to use probiotics with other uh, inflammatory diseases? I, I, don't, I don't see why not, actually. I mean, if, if the basic principle works that you can modify inflammatory um, disease by targeting the gut, I don't see why that couldn't be equally well applied to other types of inflammatory skin disease. I mean, there's, there's been um, a number of studies over the years uh, looking at atopic dermatitis which of course is the other really big inflammatory skin disease. And it's been proved beyond doubt now that if you give pregnant women probiotics in the last three months of gestation and on into when they're breastfeeding, you can certainly significantly reduce the risk of atopic dermatitis in, in the offspring. And that's even in um, studies where the parents have both been high risk for a, atopic dermatitis, either because one or both of them has AD themselves. Um, but in terms of people with established disease, the, the success with probiotics hasn't really been shown. But I, I actually think that that might be to do with the length of some of these studies. I, th I think you probably have to take probiotics for a number of months before you see an effect. And some of these studies, I, I believe, are a little bit too short. So I think that there's definitely mileage in modulating the gut. I mean, there's for, for a long time now, there's been a view, healthy gut, healthy everything else. And I, I really do believe that, that the more, the more that I look at other people's studies. So yeah, I don't see why this shouldn't be applicable to other conditions, uh, provided we understand what the pathways are that go wrong, and we can find strains that will specifically target those pathways. I think part of the problem with probiotics research is there's this view that any old bacterium will do, and that's clearly not, not the case so we need to understand a lot more about not only the biology of these diseases, but the biology of the, the different organisms that we might want to use to target these diseases.